The Indiostropia test is a test that observes fixation behavior in order to determine monocular function during binocular viewing with respect to possible amblyopia in pre-verbal children and those too young to cooperate with subjective vision testing. Since visual acuity measurement in these children is not possible through regular optotype testing, fixation patterns are made use of to determine fixation preference and possible amblyopia, the premise being that an amblyopic eye will not maintain fixation under conditions of binocular viewing. When there is manifest strabismus, the fixation pattern of the deviating eye is determined by occluding the fixing eye. In straight eyes or those with less than 10 prism diopters of deviation, the indiostropia test is used to determine fixation preference. This test consists of two parts. The first part that determines the fixation preference and the second part that determines the maintenance of fixation of the non-preferred eye. A vertical prism, most commonly a 10 to 20 prism diopter base down prism is the most commonly used. A base up prism can also be used optionally in non-totic cases but is mandatory when ptosis is present to prevent the eyelid from obstructing the shifted image. When a prism is placed vertically in front of one eye, the eyes are dissociated by the induction of a vertical diplopia and the eye behind the prism moves up to fix the newly shifted image. So here the right eye sees the shifted image and the left eye the original straight ahead image. Fixation preference will determine the subsequent behavior of the eyes. Patients with equal vision and no fixation preference will alternate between the two images. If the eye without the prism is the preferred eye then there will be no change in the position of the eyes. However, if the eye behind the prism is the preferred eye because of better vision, then the weaker non-preferred eye without the prism will also move up. So basically, no fixation preference is indicated either when there is free alternation of the eyes or when switching the prism to the fellow eye causes the fixation pattern to reverse. Armed with this knowledge, let's dive into the test. The prism is first placed in front of the right eye and one of three scenarios plays out. Scenario 1 The two eyes alternate fixation freely. Scenario 2 Both eyes move up indicating right eye fixation. Scenario 3 There is no shift in fixation indicating left eye fixation. Now in scenario 1, freely alternating fixation indicates no fixation preference and the test may be terminated. If a fixation preference is found, then the prism is placed over the left eye and the behavior of the eyes is noted. Now in this scenario where the right eye was fixing, the prism is now placed in front of the left eye and one of two things will happen. Position A There is no shift in fixation which means that the right eye is continuing to fix. This confirms the right eye preference or Position B Both eyes will shift up. This indicates a left eye fixation that is, there is a reversal of fixation with the prism over the left eye. A reversal of fixation indicates no fixation preference. On the other hand, in position A, in which the right eye fixation is confirmed, the second part of the test is performed. Before we do that, let's see this third scenario, wherein the left eye was fixing with the prism over the right eye. Again, one of two positions can occur. A. Wherein there is no shift of fixation indicating a right eye fixation. That is, there is a reversal of fixation meaning again no fixation preference. Position B. Is where both eyes move up indicating continued left eye fixation and therefore a left eye fixation preference. Now, regardless of the scenario 
Once a fixation preference has been confirmed, the second part of the test has to be performed to determine how well the child maintains fixation with the non-preferred eye. So let's say that in this case there is a fixation preference for the right eye. Place the prism in front of the preferred eye and occlude that eye, forcing the non-preferred eye to fix. Then remove the occluder alone and observe for how long the fixation is maintained with the non-preferred eye. Grading is done according to the following scheme. The child may be graded as having a weak fixation preference for the preferred eye if the non-preferred eye holds well. If it holds briefly or does not hold, then it is termed as having a strong fixation preference. What do we mean by each of these? Holds well means that the non-preferred eye holds fixation for at least 3 seconds through a smooth pursuit or through a blink before refixation to the dominant eye. Holds briefly means the non-preferred eye holds fixation for 1 to 3 seconds before refixation takes place and not through a pursuit or blink and does not hold means that there is immediate refixation to the preferred eye. A strong fixation preference is believed to indicate the possibility of amblyopia. This test is not accurate by itself as a screening test to detect amblyopia but used in conjunction with a complete clinical evaluation which can help determine if amblyopia is present to a sufficient degree to warrant treatment. If you like this video, you may show your appreciation by making a small contribution to help support the channel. Here below the video window, click on Super Thanks. Choose the amount you would like to contribute and then click Buy and Send to complete the transaction. Thank you.